Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop here at Flat 6 Motorsports. My name's Ivan and today we're going to walk you through replacing your leaking timing cover bolts on this Macan. Let's get to it. So today we have a first generation Macan, it's a 2016 GTS. And these vehicles are notorious at having oil leaks at their timing cover screws. Now, Porsche came up with a solution later on. Um, and what we did was we took those parts that they use and we put together a kit for you. This is what you'll get when you order it. And what it consists of is two brand new steel screws and washers to replace those weak and flimsy aluminum screws, which are what caused the oil leak in the first place. Now, you only need a couple of tools to get this done in a few hours of your time. You'll need a T25, a T30, and a couple small, either small extension, quarter inch ratchet, uh, long T30 if you can get it, some needle nose pliers, any type of flathead screwdriver, and a small pry tool uh, for removing some of the trim. Now let's get into it and show you how it's done. So the first step to get into these timing cover screws is gonna be removing these trim panels. Now, not all dot one Macans are gonna have these panels, but we'll just walk you through it. Now there's five of these little tab things and we have a little pry tool. And so just like so, we're gonna pry up each of these. And so we'll take those out. And they're located just right around the perimeter of this trim panel on both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and pop those off real quick. All right, now that the plugs are removed, we'll go ahead and gently lift up on the trim panel and slide it backwards, just like so. And what that does with that trim panel out of the way, now you have access to uh, the screw that's holding the airbox in place because it will be removing that next. All right, now that we have the trim panel out of the way, we're gonna take off the four T25 screws to get the cover for the air filter out of the way. And then we'll be pulling the air filter out of the airbox. All right, once you have the filter cover removed, you can slide up the outer, excuse me, the inner wall panel. Take that out. Now you'll be able to remove the factory air filter. Now that we've got the air filter out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and take out the T30 screw here that's holding the air box onto the frame rail. All right, once you have the T30 screw undone there, you can gently pry the air box cover back towards the engine. You'll expose the two uh, pins that are holding the intake piping to the air box itself. What you're gonna to wanna to do is use your, either your long needle nose pliers or a long T30 bit and rotate these pins so that the little tab is facing towards the outside, not towards the tube, but away from the tube. And that'll allow the locating pin to be released. So we'll go ahead and work that out, like just like so. There's one in the front, and then we'll do another one here in the back. And once you have those pins out, go ahead and take your long flathead screwdriver. You're gonna wanna go ahead and just kinda work it right where those pins were. And you're gonna basically kinda pry the piping out of the air box. It's gonna be a bit snug, you can use your hand on the inside to help. But you wanna kinda of work it out. It does have an O-ring on it, so it may be, whoop, there we go. It may be a little difficult to unseat, as you can see right there. It has an O-ring, and that should just pop right out. Now, once you have that unseated, the air box will be able to lift straight up and out. Now, pay attention to these two locating tabs in the bottom of the air box. That will be critical for when we go ahead and reinstall it later. So now that we've gotten all the components out of the way, we took a look at the screw itself to see if it actually was leaking. This particular side was not leaking right now. Uh, I did put my T30 on it just to check the torque of it and it is nice and tight and dry. So we don't wanna mess with that side because we do risk breaking that screw if we do need to loosen it. Uh, generally I recommend only replace the screw if it's either leaking or if it is loose or a combination of both. Usually 
if it's loose, it will be leaking. Uh, this one looks great, so we're gonna leave that one alone and we're gonna go ahead and start on the other side because we did see oil leak on that side. So now that we checked out the passenger side, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the driver's side. Now, it comes apart very similar to the passenger side. It does have one extra step, but we're gonna start off by removing this trim panel and then we'll get to that in just a second. So now that we got the trim panel out of the way, uh, the extra step that we have to do on the driver's side versus the passenger side before we can get this airbox out is we do have to take off this coolant valve off the airbox assembly. Now we're not removing the valve or disconnecting any hose or anything like that. There is a small T30 screw just underneath the valve that we will need to go ahead and take off. And the valve will just go ahead and gently separate from the airbox. Now it doesn't go very far, so just have to kind of leave it out of the way and just be careful when you're moving things around. Um, but that way we can be able to pull out the, uh, the rest of the airbox assembly. Now, just like the passenger side, we're gonna go ahead and use our T30 on an extension, quarter inch drive to go ahead and get the T30 screw right here so we can disconnect the air box from the frame rail. Now that that screw is loosened, go ahead and lift up slightly on the air box and tilt towards the front of the motor. And that'll expose again the two guide pins that hold the intake piping into the air box itself. And just like before, we'll go ahead and rotate those pins so the little tab faces outward and then pull up gently. All right, now that the pins are removed, go ahead and use that screwdriver again and go ahead and pry that piping. So now that we got the air box out of the way, we were able to take a look at that timing cover screw and we found that it was a little bit loose and starting to leak. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it. Um, but before we do that, there's one extra step that we need to do on the driver's side and that's to pull a wiring harness out of its uh, tabs and then we'll kind of move that out of the way because it is blocking the screw. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Okay, this is the wiring harness right down here. You're gonna gently pull it off of its plastic tab there and off the plastic tab right here as well. And we're gonna go ahead and set that aside because we need to get to the screw right in here. So as you can see, it is a little bit loose. So we're gonna go very gently, just kind of backing off because we don't want to break it. In the event the screw does break in the bore, you have a couple options based on how far out the screw is before it broke. If it breaks early in the removal, you may still have a nub of the threaded portion sticking out of the back of the bore, as you can see here. In this instance, you may be able to grab it with your fingers or some needle nose pliers and back the screw out as the bore is threaded all the way through to the back. If the screw breaks a little later in the extraction, as seen here, will be a bit more challenging to remove what's left in the bore. The methods will vary based on the tools available and their effectiveness is based on how much of the screw is still threaded. My most effective method is using a small piece of tacky, gummy substance similar to modeling clay or what you can find on the back of sound deadening products like Dynamat and you place it on a small stick or possibly even like another screw. Now, once you put that on, you can insert it in the bore and attempt to adhere it to the broken end of the screw, and then you can twist it out. One other method is using a small pair of needle nose pliers and either grabbing the broken end of the screw or simply wedging the ends into the bore around the end and rotating the pliers. This method can also be used with a small flathead screwdriver and wedging the blade in the bore and the friction can sometimes loosen the screw. All right, luckily we were able to get the aluminum screw out in one piece. Uh, as you can see here, it's getting a bit oily. Um, and here we have the new screw, a steel screw now with the washer. Uh, so it's gonna be a lot stronger. You don't have to worry about breakage like you would with this one. So let's go ahead and we're gonna get this uh, new screw in here and get her back on the road. Now we've already cleaned out the bore. Um, just depends on how much oil you have, but uh, do recommend cleaning it out with uh, brake clean and a, a small, you know, the small uh, hose bit on the, on the can, clean that out. Um, that way your, the screw will thread in a little bit easier. 
He said most of this job you're going to have to do by feel because there's not much to see. Um, if you want to use a small mirror to help guide that bolt back in place, um, recommend that for sure. But for the most part, you just have to feel where it's at and just uh, and just take your time, go slow. Now, once you have that bolt uh, pretty much all the way flush uh, by hand, um, uh, go ahead and use your small, I'm using a small uh, T30 ratchet to uh, just snug it down. It's only 10 newton meters, which is <laughs> basically like two finger tight. <laughs> it's not, not a lot of force, um, but because it is a steel screw, it, it's a lot more forgiving. And there we have it. She's nice and snug. Uh, once that's back in place, you can go ahead and take that wiring harness, clip the one end on the front, and the other clip goes right there under the, uh, the ignition coil. And that's it. She's all ready to start going back together. Okay, so we got the leaking timing cover screw replaced, and now the fun part begins. Uh, so now we have to put these air boxes back in the vehicle. So they can be very finicky to put in, especially if it's an older car. Um, it's gonna have grime and uh, dirt all over. It's gonna make it very difficult to get back in. Um, so we're gonna grab our favorite can of silicone lubricant. It's gonna help you out a lot. A um, couple things I wanted to point out real quick. Uh, make sure to wipe everything down uh, with the rag, trying to get as much dirt as you can off of the joining surfaces. Um, and also have these two locating pins on the bottom of the air box. Now, I'll show you here in the engine bay, uh, there's two grommets on the bottom that you're gonna be, that these are gonna line up into. Um, so that way we can get the intake piping in there as well. So let me show you real quick what we need to lubricate. Let's get this air box in. All right, so take your can of silicone lube. As you can see here, we have two blue grommets. That's what those pins on the air box are gonna sit into. And then we have our intake pipe here. Now, as before I was saying, the there is an O-ring on this. So that's what actually makes that nice tight seal, but it also makes it very difficult to uh, reseat back into the air box. So we're gonna use our silicone here. Just take a rag, catch any excess. Spray a little bit there, a little bit there, and we'll go ahead and put a little bit on this O-ring here. There, go ahead and kind of wipe it all around. Uh, that's gonna make your life a lot easier. Go ahead and wipe up any excess. Okay, so first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and get the air box in place. Now we're doing this with the filter out, so that way you can use one of the hands to go ahead and help guide the piping into the proper location. You can also reach underneath here. So the grommets don't have to be fully seated right at this moment, uh, but what you wanna do is go ahead and use one of your hands to help guide the intake piping back into its proper place. And we'll go ahead and use our uh, long screwdriver again. And what this is gonna do is put pressure on the back side of the intake piping um, while we kind of guide it in place with our hand. Now that the piping's in place, we'll go ahead and put in our front, uh, front pin first. Like I said, take note of the locating tab that's gonna to go towards the outside, away from the piping itself. All right, we got one in, and we got the other one. Now, just to make sure you can give that little quarter turn of a, give that little quarter turn and that way they're locked into place. So now you know they're locked into place. And so now you can kind of freely manipulate the, the air box to get it seated in its grommets. You don't have to worry about the intake piping popping back off. So let's go ahead and get it seated in its grommets. And if you do it right, and once you feel it around, it should seat firmly, securely down, and your T30 screw will be lined up right where it needs to go. That's how you know you're kind of like in place. Everything is nice and solid. Once the air box is seated to where it needs to be, go ahead and tighten down that T30 screw. Once it's tightened down, we'll go ahead and get the air filters back in. So now we're about to put the air filters in, but I don't really want to put these worn, dirty air filters back in. So 
I think we're gonna go ahead and put in these flat six high floor air filters back in. So let's go ahead and do that now. So there you have it. That's all it takes to install the leaking timing cover screws. Um, and our customer is going to also enjoy that high flow intake kit as well. For more information or if you want to get a kit for yourself, check us out at flat6.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more information. Thanks. Have a good one.